So, Robert, thank you for being thank you. with us, and I give you Fantastic. the button. Good afternoon. Uh, design and construction are often considered as very separate activities. But computer programming can enable a more direct connection between these, where there can be a creative approach to both design and production operating together through robotic fabrication. 3D printing is one version of robotic manufacture that happens to be bringing in the capabilities, once again, of a detailed architectural expression. This architectural expression has also been able to be achieved with uh, a lot less material involved in construction, a kind of more intricate design with increased porosity and more optimal structural performance. 3D printing, as you probably imagine most often, is done from having a predetermined design that you create that is then executed automatically in the machine, as you see here. However, there are other opportunities to add in creativity to 3D printing, such as using material creatively. What you see here is a series of experiments where the parameters of the deposition of a cementitious material is being varied. In this case, the velocity and motion of the robotic arm that is controlling deposition. And the 3D printed material is taking on different characteristics simply from that one variable. However, material is unpredictable. Fortunately, we have a lot of computer vision capabilities today. Things like um, a wide range of sensors that enable dynamic feedback to these unpredictable occurrences. At the University of Innsbruck, we've been exploring how to create adaptive 3D prints using computer vision uh, to create prototypes of concrete facade panels. So uh, these panels, they're made with a cementitious concrete in a process that involves sequentially layering on formwork, as you see on the bottom of the image. And there's constantly a 3D scan that's scanning the formwork that keeps being added as well as what has been printed. And an algorithm is determining how to control the machine. The algorithm that controls the toolpath of the machine is a behavior-based algorithm, meaning it, a designer does not design a form. A designer constructs a series of rules, conditional rules, that operate in real time in response to what has already been printed and can deal with a time-based approach, where in this case you see there is a, a portion of a 3D print, and then there's additional formwork being laid on top, and then the printing continues above that. You can see that the material is a lot more detailed in its deposition than the motion of the machine. And the results gain a lot of geometric complexity uh, through this instantiation into the physical world. Uh, these are about one and a half meters high, these pieces. And you can also see that viscosity and velocity play a role, adding detail. They're topologically complex because of the layered formwork, so you can see voids occurring. And the differentiation in character is coming very much from the local decisions of the algorithm in which this was generated. So basically what we have here is a very simple abstract model of modeling in terms of formwork and then executing in terms of algorithm and then complexity is generated from the material and the motion of the machine in time. So behavior becomes a creative participant within 3D printing. 3D printing has started to be adopted by the building industry in terms of large scale 3D printers. Winsung Decoration Engineering Company in China 3D printed this five-story apartment building and a number of houses. Uh, and a lot of these uh, projects are reducing significantly the time and cost of uh, construction. They're already live within our industry. They are focused, however, Winsung, on prefabricated 3D printing, which means that there's still an awful lot of material that must be transported to a construction site in the UK, 20% of construction cost is in delivery of materials to site. If we printed on site, we would be significantly reducing the amount of material we have to transport. 
And there are on-site 3D printers such as Contour Crafting or Apis Core. These have, however, a constraint of a build volume and a printing speed. Printers tend to be constrained uh, in what they can print based on the frame of the machine. If you want to print something larger, you can assemble many prints, or you can construct a larger machine. However, already on construction sites, we see smaller robots, such as these demolition bots by Husqvarna. If you had multiple small robots on site, you could print parallel. You could print in substantial speeds and in a much more diverse site scenarios such as in remote locations that you could with an on-site 3D printer. So at the Architectural Association in the DRL, we've been conceptually exploring in a speculative way the idea of swarm-based 3D printing on-site through aerial robots. This work's focused on the architectural design implications of merging design and construction as a singular process in a similar way to maybe the way termites or wasps operate where one design decision is generated in response to the previous design decision. Aerial robots, or UAVs, unmanned aerial vehicles, come in a range of sizes. Some of them are more suitable for carrying heavy loads for construction. They tend to be operated by remote control, so we have to write computer algorithms to control their motion very precisely so it can operate automat automatically. And these types of motions can operate at both a, a flight scale and a potentially a more mobile machine movement scale, similar to what you saw on the robot arm, where motion becomes part of the creative process. We can also have aerial robots cooperate to construct together, in this case, listening to each other and negotiating space and time together to perform a construction task. We can take a more autonomous approach to on-site robotics. In this case, the robot has been instructed to go from one corner of the room to the other, but it has not been told how to get there. It must use computer vision on board to locally determine how to avoid the, the lines. We can also map out instructions in space. So in this case, this robot has been told to behave in a certain way when it perceives markers that are mapped out in the space, so it can approach uh, a material refilling position. The architectural speculations we've been looking into are focused on remote locations where design could play out on site. We've been developing pre uh, printing uh, deposition techniques. In this case, this is ICE 3D printing. And working out how we can use natural resources in a sustainable way, in this case, developing methods of harvesting and redistributing snow to be able to 3D print simple shelters using aerial robots. We can monitor deviation from a design model, but then we can also actually design in deviation. In this case, we give a very simple 3D model to a design and then allow the autonomous interaction of robots to create more detailed levels of design on the fly that can uh, achieve performances in terms of cavity walls and, and thermal insulation and provide detailed expressive designs. Something like this might look a little bit strange, but it's actually incredibly quantifiable. We know exactly how many robots constructed it. We know which decisions are made when in order to achieve that result. Desert locations is another opportunity for using natural material by using the desert sand as the support and the build material and the printing material. We can print on top of sand dunes and then remove the sand after we have finished the 3D print. So this is a, a scale model 3D print of a sand dune being made into a large structure. These types of structures could be built around oases to facilitate desert greening initiatives. And depending on what we print and the pattern in which we print, we achieve different structural conditions where we're able to use what is quite fragile material, but through layers that are interconnected, we can achieve a structural performance. 
structure is an interesting problem when you start constructing a design problem through an, a construction sequence in time. Bridges, for instance, can be constructed from two opposing sides, meaning that they are a structural cantilever until they're joined in the middle to become effectively a beam. You can imagine constructing through 3D printing with UAVs, but we need to incorporate structural parameters into the way they print. Where is the detailed resolution of that print? Does it align with structure? Can we anticipate the next structural strain to occur? Like perhaps in the outdoor environment, wind causes drift and we print slightly differently to what we have intended. So we need to be able to pause what we're doing and print an additional support before we continue where we left off. So we've developed methods of depositing uh, fiber composite in horizontal deposition to be able to make models such as this one that are able to cantilever with a minimal amount of material. And we've imagined how to connect these to UAVs. So this is a, a proposed site of a remote village that only has pedestrian access, but a high level of tourism. So the proposal is for a pedestrian bridge that shortcuts the, the pedestrian route while providing a lookout location. Design operates in two ways. Here, what you see is a very simple 3D model being manually designed and iteratively tested in structural analysis. It's checked to see whether it can support two cantilevers but it does not deal with the pragmatics of construction. Construction is where the real design occurs, because in the construction simulation, one has to take into account every single step of the way how to make sure this structure is supported as it cantilevers off the cliff face. What you see in the purple was the initial design model. The green and the yellow are all improvised as we go by the UAVs as they interact in time. And the result is a construction sequence that's highly specific with an ornamental detail that is completely tied to the structural resolution of the project. The studios speculated on this for quite a while, and there's some difficulties attached with working on this work. In particular, position and localization control is very difficult on aero robots. There needs to be more development on material science and we can harness a lot more sensor technologies for real-time control. You can see in industry already, companies like Komatsu, a construction company in Japan, using UAVs to position vehicles on sites. Fortunately, we've just started a UK government research grant into aerial additive building manufacturing. Our principal investigator is Dr. Mirko Kovac at Imperial College, and I'm running the computer science at UCL and the architectural design at Architectural Association. And we're fortunate enough to have material scientists on board, construction companies, uh, bespoke aero robots being developed, and ground-based robots to, to look into how we can actually deliver this for industry. Thank you. Thank you, Robert.